So we're still going to consider ourselves back at the zoo, and we're interested in studying cheetahs in this course. So let's draw the cheetah again. So this cheetah, you know, it has surrounded nice green grass. And you tell your friend, hey, check out the cheetah. Then your friend might ask, well, where is the cheetah? So that's actually a big question in physics. Where is the cheetah? Where is the cheetah? So it, it seems quite obvious, like, well, the cheetah is there. But that's not very helpful. When we're doing physics, we want to do better than that. We want to describe things with more certainty. So it turns out that this cheetah is really hard to describe if all we have is just empty grasslands and only consider the cheetah. So we need to go back to the previous video and whenever you're recording motion, you need to try to at least make sure that there's one object that remains stationary in each frame. Well, if we're looking at a cheetah, what object can always stay stationary? A tree. So we're going to draw a tree. Oh, so you see, if the cheetah was to move along, the tree will stay stationary. So we choose that because we want to make our answer to where is the cheetah in reference to this tree. So again, pick a stationary object. Why do we pick a stationary object? Because again, we want to answer the question, where is the cheetah? That's the same thing as answering what is its location. In other words, location. So to describe the location of something, you need to say where that object is relative to something else. So that something else is our station and tree. So now we can say, oh, the cheetah is to the right of the tree. Okay, we're doing better now, but in physics we have to do even better than that. So we need to specify exactly how far away and in what direction. So what we introduce is going to be a coordinate system. So we pick a stationary object and we place our coordinate system on that stationary object. So once we've chosen the tree to be our stationary object, we can choose to place the coordinate system anywhere on the tree. Then it gets confusing. Well, if I can place a coordinate system, well, first of all, coordinate system is just your x and y plane that you can study in math or your life. So we can place our coordinate system at the bottom, midway of the tree, at the top of the tree, anywhere on the tree. So the most convenient place is to place it at the bottom of the tree. Okay, so let's try to draw what it looks like. Well, a coordinate system is just a set of rulers. So you can imagine two set of rulers here. And we're going to set the set of rulers going along at the bottom of the tree and along the grass. So our set of coordinate system is just what you're familiar with in math as your x coordinate and y coordinate. And that would mean that right here where the two rulers meet, we can call this point the origin. Or in other words, we can call it the reference point. The reference point. So let's see. Oh, now we can do so much better because we can describe the cheetah where it is located in reference to our origin, which we place on the tree. So let's figure that out. Okay, so let's pick the center of mass again. So the cheetah is going to be some distance along the x coordinate, let's say two meters. And it's going to be some distance along the y, let's say 0 0.5 meters. So in order to describe where is the cheetah with our chosen coordinate system, we can say in terms of the x space coordinate and the y space coordinate. So the cheetah 
is at the position. Again, we're going to use a coordinate system, so it's going to be 2 meters along the x and 0 0.5 meters along the y. So that's how we first describe where is the chicken.